connect together through God's love, we can find real life through real stories and real answers to life's questions. Are you on Spotify? If so, be sure to check out our worship playlists by searching for the playlist name, Worship at Christ's Church. The Rooted Experience redefines how people live life and view their relationship with God and others, giving context to what it means to be part of something bigger. You will begin to see God in new ways, allowing you to experience a different way of life, community, authenticity, and generosity. Connect with God, the church community, and your purpose in unexpected, life-changing ways. Go to ourchristchurch.com and click on Rooted for more information. Why does Christ's Church offer church online? We offer CC Live as our big, audacious goal to take you from online to offline, engaging with God on a more personal level and with each other in your community. This is why we are now offering a pathway for you to develop and grow closer to God from wherever you are. Take the next step in your spiritual journey today. Mixed up, messed up, out of order, not right. That's how life seems for many of us. Sometimes we forget, maybe we didn't ever know, that God is in the background. Putting Good morning, Sissy Live. Joey Santos here, your online pastor. So glad you're here with us, with my friend Brad Wilson, last week of the series. Yeah. Then they sent me out of the country. You ask, he answered. Then we sent him out of the country. That's all we do here. You know, we just want to make sure he's safe. Sending him to DR. So <laughs> <laughs> tell me, first tell me about this mission trip. It's going to be awesome. We're, we're taking a group. There's 11 of us total going down to Santiago in the mm -hmm. Dominican. And uh, it's just going to be a week where uh, we get to serve the, the people of the island down there. Yeah. And uh, really... God, we're excited that God's going to work through us. And uh, what I'm hoping for is that we make an impact without even saying anything. You know, one of the things I like the most about mission trips is because we go out with the expectation that we are helping somebody. We mm -hmm. end up getting more help ourselves. Oh, yeah. Then your your last experience was pretty impactful, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it was It was what I would call life change. You just go yeah. down there and like you said, you go down there thinking, oh, we're going to do all this stuff. And you get down there and everything really changes for you. And uh, God really spoke to me in ways that yeah. uh, I was not ready for, and but I'm glad it happened. Well, we're excited about it. We'll be praying for this trip. They live here on Tuesday morning. They'll be back the following week. We're excited to see what God's going to do mm -hmm. there. Uh, and man, last week of the series has been so good. It's it has been incredible. I mean, if you, I hope you, you, if you missed last week, I hope you had a chance to go. Check it out. I mean, we didn't, we didn't announce the baptisms, but we had people. People mm -hmm. respond to the call. Mm -hmm. uh, and guess what? The baptistry is back up on top of the yeah. stage today. Yeah. So, but no, for those of you online, for all our house campuses, 
you, that's not a problem that we can figure this out. If you wanted to get baptized today, we're going to figure this out. Mm -hmm. uh, what, is, what is the question for today? The question today is, is God still relevant in our lives today? So we're going to unpack that a little bit. And when we think of it, it's kind of broad, but, you know, really it's, is, is God still influential mm -hmm. and make an impact in, in all of our lives and in, in the culture and the world we live in? So I think it's a good I question. I can't wait. I think it's going to be a great message. Uh, and like we say every week, um, make sure to tell us where you're worshiping from. Mm -hmm. We got volunteers uh, ready uh, to connect with you. We have them right here. You can take a look at it. The volunteers we have. We're going to change to this camera right here. Uh, you may want to look up there uh, to say hi. Uh, you know, by the way, this is my wife. <laughs> She's in the chat room today. So just be nice to me. Uh, don't, you know, and don't ask her questions that she cannot answer. <laughs> But it's so excited to see what God's doing. We, she'll be here. She can answer any questions you may have. You know, Chris, our producer back there. See, you can, you can kind of get a look at the room here. Got our producer back there. Uh, and I hear Brad Wilson. But we're very excited, very excited to see uh, what God's doing. Uh, and so excited about service mm -hmm. today. Um, the music. Uh, and everything else we'll be able to, to accomplish, to do uh, yeah. in God's name, to glorify his name. Uh, and man, tell us where you're worshiping from and, and share. Share this. But tell us where you are worshiping from right now. Uh, tell us uh, uh, who you're with. Uh, because we want to celebrate. We want to celebrate the church that's beyond these walls. Yeah. And, and so many people are in, uh, joining us. And, you know, September 1st, you see my T-shirt here, monkey around with us. Is because we're going to be at the Monkey Bar September 1st. Starting September 1st is our new house campus right here at a bar. It'll be the church at the bar uh, starting September 1st. So we're going to go out there, mm -hmm. uh, get ready. Very special service today, very special communion time. Looking forward to what God is going to be doing here at Christ Church today. What would your life be like if you could experience love in a more meaningful way? How would you be changed? We believe that together, through God's love, we can find real life through real stories and real answers to life's questions. Church, we not only believe in redeeming our local communities back to God, but also in taking the redemptive message of Jesus throughout our country and into our world. One of the big ways we do this is through our various mission partners who we support throughout the U.S. and overseas. One great example of this is through our house campuses. In Ghana, Africa, Joshua Bobini leads four house campuses, and we have been witnessing the impact God continues to make on that side of the world through technology. We are thankful for the generosity of the church that has contributed to the ways that God is moving both locally and globally, and believe that continued generosity will only lead to more lives saved. I really feel like I could just point it to the word of humility. Uh, my favorite verse in the Bible is John 3.30, and it talks about as John the Baptist, he was baptizing so many people at the time, and Jesus came along and started to baptize other people. And some of, some of John the Baptist's followers um, saw this and went to John the Baptist and said, like, John, what's going on? Like, Jesus, he's baptizing people. More people are going to him. And, John the Baptist said, like, he must increase, I must decrease. And so at the end of the day, everything that John was about was about Jesus, him increasing. And so that's been my life verse uh, for a long time. And that's kind of just the goal of everything that I do, uh, whether it's on stage or off stage. Everything I do, I want 
to help Jesus increase and myself to decrease. And so that's the goal I feel of my life. And I feel like that really kind of defines what worship means to me. It's just to be humble and to allow God uh, to be increased and for myself to decrease. Why does Christ's Church offer Church Online? We offer CC Live as our big, audacious goal to take you from online to offline, engaging with God on a more personal level and with each other in your community. This is why we are now offering a pathway for you to develop and grow closer to God from wherever you are. Take the next step in your spiritual journey today. Worship means to me is uh, to praise God any way you can through your singing, your lifting your hand, your reading, whatever you do. I think that uh, I, I think of God as being my father, as I think of my daughter when she sings. I worship her because I think she's wonderful and because she's my daughter. And I think because we take so many things for granted in life that we go to football games and basketball games and we just cheer and spread the word how much we love them. So this is why I think this is the same thing we should do for Jesus. We should praise Him and worship Him any way we can. We should let people know how we feel about Him. Are you ready to experience a meaningful time of praise and worship? Are you ready to engage in prayer and powerful Bible teaching? Then welcome to CC Live, which starts right now. Good morning, everybody. How y'all feeling today? How y'all feeling in the back? Yes. What about over here, y'all? What about over here, y'all? Right? In the back? Great. We're going to sing this song. But before we do, I have a feeling that because we're a church and we do a lot of, you know, happy songs and we sing them to our Savior. That's a great thing, but I want us to just kind of help each other create this energy. So if you don't mind, if you're comfortable enough, just give somebody next to you a really big hug, a really big smile. Yeah, there we go. leave her out, y'all. She's kind of far away. Here we go. Oh, we look to the sun. Set our
displayed on a criminal's cross Heaven rejoices though heaven at lost But then Jesus
thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me Waiting for change to come Knowing the battles won But you have never failed me Your promise still stands Great is your faithful this church I told everyone here that the Lord showed me a church that is going to enter a time of war I'm talking about Christ Church and we're in that war we've been in that war for at least a year people have lost family members people have lost friends people have lost their minds Right? People have gone through hard things. Am I the only person who's experienced this? And I'm going to tell y'all something. This church is an army. It's an army. And so when we worship, when we sing these songs, these aren't songs, these aren't lullabies. Church, these are war cries. This is a war cry. So I don't know what you need to do to prepare yourself to sing as loudly as you can. But when I think about my sister and the things that she's gone through, 
When I think about the, the hard nights that she has to spend, wondering about a transplant, wondering about having to live a life on dialysis when she has a son and she's married. And I don't mean to put all your business out there, but I guess I just kind of did. Go for it. When I look at my friend Matt, who lost his dad at age 13, right? When I look at my sister Allison, who it was a, 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 a family member, yeah, lost a daughter. When I look at two of us up here who have gone through a divorce, I'm not thinking about ways to keep this inside, church. When I come around the people who say that they love the King of Kings as much as I do, I'm looking for a way to let it go. So put your preferences and your comfort level to the side as we sing this song to the risen King. How many people know this song? Do it again. How many of you know it? Put your hands in the air if you know it. So I want to hear you sing it. Just, just stay standing, just stay standing. You know what, um, what Christian just shared? There's a lot of brokenness on this stage and I'm a broken person. I went through a divorce 30 some years ago and God brought hope back into my life and my marriage. And um, we stand up here broken like everybody else in this body. And that's why what Jesus has continued to do, he will continue to do again. Uh, and I just wanna pray for us before we kind of move into communion. Um, because we're not performers up here. We're all part of an audience of one singing to him. God, we just thank you right now for the power that we know that comes through brokenness and authenticity. 
Father, you see the, the mess that we have. We see the sins that we have. You see the, the problems we deal with, just the frailty of the human body. And God, we know that one day we'll be in a place of perfection with you forever. But until that time, Father God, we know you meet us right where you are because you're our good, good father and you're our good, good shepherd. Father, continue to teach us what it means to walk in authenticity and brokenness before you so that, Father God, you, above all else, will get the glory. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Yesterday, I went to see the Lion King. Um, Somebody had to check it out to see if my two-year-old grandson would be able to handle it. And the answer is no, I can't, can't take him. If you haven't seen it yet, I encourage you to. Well, CC Live, we're here for a very special communion time. Um, we came all the way to Louisville, uh, right here in Kentucky, to with, take communion with Dave and Valerie Reed. Mm -hmm. Dave has been part of our church for, for a long time. And back in February... Uh, he, on the driving here, he uh, had a car accident. And through the car accident, he ended up staying here in a facility right here in Kentucky. Has been a long road of recovery, but one thing that Dave took advantage of it was the CC Live. They sit down, he and Valerie, they sit down, they watch CC Live, and they take communion every Sunday with us. So today, we brought CC Live right here to you guys. So we can take communion together. So we can have this time of fellowship. And you know, I'm here talking uh, with them and, and I can't help but thinking about uh, hearing their stories, the stories of how Dave and Valerie have impacted the people right here uh, where they're, they're, they're staying, how people have come and you take communion with nurses and people that have come across uh, your lives here and how you have impacted them. And I, I thought of this person called Thomas Chris Holmes. Have you heard of him? Thomas yeah. Chris Holmes is the author of the song, mm -hmm. Great is Thy Faithfulness. And the thing about, about Thomas is that he, uh, when he wrote that song, Thomas was going through a very tough moment in his life. Because of his health issues, uh, he could not work anymore. So he had to isolate himself. So income was a problem. He was not making much money as he needed. But he wrote a song to tell the story about how God has been faithful to him. God was faithful to him the entire time. And man, I look at his life. I look at the song that he wrote. And I think of you. I think of the impact that you already have. In spite of the circumstances, the situation, you have this impact in people's lives. Your faith was not shaken by that. And really brings me to Psalms chapter 40, verse 10, that says, I do not hide your righteous in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. And I think that exemplifies your life, exemplifies the fact that in spite of the circumstances or situations, you continue faithful to God and God always displays his faithfulness to us. And that's only possible because of his only son who died on the cross for all of us. Communion is all about that. It's for us remembering that Jesus died on the cross for all of us, that we continue this faithfulness towards God and God is so faithful to us. And when we last expect it, he shows up. When we most need him, he shows up. But that's faithfulness. That's why the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, is so powerful in our lives. That's why it speaks so much to our hearts. And I think it speaks to us today as we are here in this very special communion time for all of us here at CC Life. So I'm going to pray. And after the prayer, you just take your time there with your family, with your friends, where you are, and take communion like we do every Sunday. Father, we thank you so much for Valerie and Dave and for their lives and all the things that you have done through them, through this situation, through the circumstances. You never 
never left them alone. So God, you promise us that you're always with us and we're going to hold on to this promise right now today. And we're going to move forward and we're going to look ahead. And we want to thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for each single one of us. Bless this day. Bless this communion time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What a powerful time, powerful moment to visit with Dave and Valerie Reed. So thankful. Thank you, Valerie and, and Dave. They're watching right now. So glad you guys allow us to come and have this precious communion time with you. There's so much to Dave's story. We shared a little bit yesterday on, on social media. Uh, if you're uh, on social media, just uh, check it out. We got a little bit of video there that shows a little bit, shares a little bit about his story uh, since the accident. But it's so glad. And there's so many people watching. He has the stories of, you know, inviting people to take communion with him uh, during CC Live. They're connected every Sunday uh, since he was uh, transferred to this uh, hospital and he's there. Uh, and Valerie, he and Valerie watch every Sunday. We're so glad, so thankful. <clears throat> but man, they're having an impact in people's lives where they are. And in spite of everything and the accident and what happened, uh, one thing that has, has not stopped doing is sharing the gospel, uh, sharing his story. So I want to please pray for them, continue to pray for recovery. Uh, and, and I hope that encourages you uh, where you are. You know, I don't know what circumstances you're going through, but I, I hope that moment really encourages you uh, in your life right now. I'm so glad to be here. You know, every Sunday we have an opportunity to give. We have an opportunity to make an impact locally and globally through giving. And I'm so excited. Uh, like we talked about, we have a group going to Dominican Republic this weekend, uh, uh, this week. Uh, and we're so excited. I want to ask you to pray for them. But if you're on the CC Life page right now, right below me here, you have a link, uh, three ways to give. You can click on that or Facebook page. You can, we're going to share a link with you where you can uh, use that link to uh, click and go and give. So important. The impact that we are having locally and globally, uh, it's incredible. And I'm thankful that you're part of it. One of the ways that we have this impact locally here is through Mad Camp, is music, arts, and drama. For you have an idea, uh, 500 kids were here this whole week doing, doing those things, music, arts, and drama. Uh, and a lot of kids are from our community. And we're thankful that this church has opened its doors to welcome those kids and give them uh, some incredible resources for them to learn, to develop in those areas. So what happened right now, they're on the stage performing a few of the things that they learned this week. We're going to jump right back. Tr Brad going to come back with a message, and I'll be back here after the message with Brad Wilson to answer any questions you may have. Let's take a look there.
Hey, let's thank God for the leadership that Heather Medler and Sean Lewis provided for us all week. And um, if you, if you want to get a part of you guys can go ahead and exit. If you guys want to go ahead and uh, leave, good job. <laughs> he wants to stay and do another one. Maybe afterwards. Uh, if you want to get plugged into our fantastic children's ministry, you can talk to Heather. You can talk to Sean Lewis. And you go ahead and be seated. We'll continue in worship. start talking even if the lights aren't on. So, hey, uh, good morning. I'm Brad Wilson. Apparently today is we're going to give him 20 minutes to preach and he's going to set up all his stuff today. And um, I see the clock. So trust me back there. If you guys are, if this is your first Sunday with us because your kids are here for Mad Camp Performance, thank you for being here. We're glad that you're here with us today. I'm Brad Wilson, uh, one of the teaching pastors here. Let's take a moment. Welcome everyone that's joining us online. Glad that you guys are here with us online. And... Uh, I don't know if you all realize this, but what the kids did, that, that was put together like in one week. So that's a phenomenal job. A lot of talented kids there that were on stage. And uh, I don't know about you, but I was glad to have them out here this morning just to share with us. I'm excited about seeing them at 1030. So let's give them another round of applause. Um, and before we get into it, there's, there's just like a lot of stuff that we're doing and covering today. Is, uh, you guys may not know this, but... We have two uh, teams that are leaving here um, this week. One of them on the accident leaves here today that we have a group that's going to on a mission trip to the Appalachia area and uh, we're excited about them. And we have another group that's going to uh, early Tuesday morning to the Dominican Republic. And so if you're in here this morning and uh, you're going on the Appalachia trip or the Dominican Republic trip, I just want to invite you to come up here uh, with me on the stage. I'm not going to make you talk, but uh, let's get these people up here and uh, let's just take a moment. We'll pray for them and then we will get into our message. So if you're here and you're going on the trip, even if you don't like coming up to the front, just come to the front. Trust me, there's nothing special bad that we have planned for you. We just want to get a chance to pray. You guys can come up on the stage. Yeah, because I don't want to be up here by myself. And then with people like Katie, I want to look like a giant over here. All right. Is that everyone? Are there people out there that are hiding? If so, um, you should be up here, but we'll pray for you anyway. So let's go ahead and take a moment. Let's pray for uh, everyone going on these trips, and then we'll get going. Father, uh, we just thank you for everyone that's up here uh, with us on the stage this morning. Uh, we thank you for everyone that's, that's not here with us, but are going to be going on these trips uh, to serve you and represent you and uh, this church to uh, just a, a bunch of different people and groups and faiths. And uh, we're excited about this opportunity. Father, uh, we pray for Tyler as he leads this trip to uh, the Appalachia region. We just pray that uh, as he's working with the families and the kids and everyone they come in contact with, that uh, people will know um, you through, through what they do, through how they love, through how they serve. And Father, for everyone that's going to the Dominican. We have a, a, a great group of people. And as they go down there as well, Father, sometimes there's a language barrier and uh, we know that that exists. But Father, uh, just allow us to impact lives, not by what we say, by what we do. And so Father, we're just thankful for this church and for the ability to go and serve outside these walls. And our prayer is just for everyone that goes, for the families that are sending people that uh, you'll keep everyone safe, that it'll be just a time uh, where you are seen and your love is shown to people and communities that need to see and experience it. So Father, we love you. I thank you for the hearts of the men and women and, and the kids that are going on these trips. And Father, just uh, work through them this week and help everyone to uh, just experience something new uh, because of you. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, thanks guys. <clears throat> yep. All right. Since this is my last Sunday preaching before I leave the country, we're going to do something a little bit different. You guys have been standing a lot, so we're just going to let you, I'm going to give you the last Sunday in July pass. Just stay seated. We're going to throw the key tag verse up, but we're going to read from our seats. Now this may disqualify me from preaching again, but uh, our key tag verse, Job 38 verses two and three, just where you're at, just, let's just read this together uh, as, as, uh, as Job writes this in here in Job 38. It says, why do you talk 
Not knowing what you're talking about. Together, up on your feet, stand tall. I have some questions for you, and I want some straight answers. All right. And so we'll just get to, there are some questions we'll get to. We're just going to get to the big question today, our last one of this series. And, and I want to thank you guys for everything. If you contributed to this series, uh, the questions, I just want to thank you for being involved in it. And our question today, it's a really simple and it's an easy question. And that is, is God still relevant in our world today? And, and as we kind of break this question down, is thinking about this, is God's word, is, is the Bible, is this book still relevant to our lives? Is, is God, is he relevant and, and in, to everything we do? And I love this question because it can go in a number of directions. And the simple answer to this question, is God still relevant today, is of course he is. Yes, God's relevant. And some of you would think, well, you have to say that because you work at a church. You're, you're, you're a preacher. You're one of, quote, God's employees. You have to say he's still relevant today. But it's a great question because we, we wrestle with this, we think about this, and if we're going to establish the, this question like, like a baseline of what I mean when I say is God still relevant today, I think it's important that we have an understanding of, of, of really when we use the word relevant, what that means. And I think that when we talk about something being relevant, what makes something relevant is that it has significant or an obvious impact, influence, bearing on everyday life. So if God is relevant today, to kind of answer that question with that definition, if you're saying, or if you're, I'm asking you, is God still relevant today? The, the thought process is I want you to think is that, okay, if God's still relevant today, that means he has a significant, he, he has a, a, a direct impact influence on our everyday life. Like it can't be one of those things where God only impacts our life like once every five years. Because if that's the case, I, I would argue that, that the answer to that question is no, God's not relevant. But I say that God is relevant in, in our life because he impacts us on a daily basis. And so what I want you to think about today, what I want you to wrestle with in your mind as we go through this question is, is to yourself is, is I, I want you to think about, okay, how does God impact my life every day? Because I would be willing to bet that some of us in here don't really feel that God has an impact or an influence on our life every day. Like we go through times, we go through seasons where we're like, well, I don't know if God's doing anything, but I'm gonna challenge you today and, and say that I believe that God is relevant to all of us, that God is working, he's doing something in, in all of our lives, that the Bible, that regardless of what culture may say, regardless of what culture thinks, that this book today is as relevant to our lives and to who we are as it's ever been. And so as we unpack these questions today, I wanted to take a trip back into the Old Testament. You know, a lot of times we set up shop in the New Testament, but there's some great truth, there's some great lessons, there's some great wisdom that we can always pull from the Old Testament. And um, so I want to take, today I want to take us back to Joshua, and we're going to go back to verse, or chapter 24. And what I want to do is we kind of begin to unpack this this morning is I want to pick things up in verse 1 of chapter 24. And we're going to read through the first 13 verses together, and then we're going to, that's going to be our, our jumping off point. So if you have your Bibles, open them to Joshua 24. You can follow along on the screen. If you have the Bible app, just, you know, hit a few clicks, boom, Joshua 24, starting in verse 1. And uh, this is what the Bible says. It says, then Joshua assembled all the tribes of Israel at Shechem. He summoned the elders, leaders, judges, and officials of Israel, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Long ago, your ancestors, including Terah, the father of Abraham, Naor, lived beyond the Euphrates River and worshipped other gods. But I took your father Abraham from the land beyond the Euphrates and led him throughout Canaan and gave him many descendants. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau, and I assigned to the hill country of Seir to Esau. But Jacob and his family went down to Egypt. Continues, then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I afflicted the Egyptians by what I did there, and I brought you out. And when I brought your people out of Egypt, you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued them with chariots and horsemen as far as the Red Sea. But they cried to the Lord for help, and he put darkness between you and the Egyptians. He brought the sea over them and covered them. You saw with your own eyes what I did to the Egyptians. Then you lived in the wilderness for a long time. He said, I brought you to the land of the Amorites who lived east of the Jordan. They fought against you, but I gave them into your hands. I destroyed them from before you, and you took possession of their land. When Balak, son of Zippor, the king of Moab, prepared to fight against Israel, he sent for Balaam, 
son of Beor, to put a curse on you. But I would not listen to Balaam, so he blessed you again and again, and I delivered you out of his hand. Verse 11 says, then you crossed the Jordan and came to Jericho. The citizens of Jericho fought against you, as did also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. But I gave them into your hands. I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove them out before you, also two Amorite kings, and you did not do it with your own sword and bow. So I gave you a land on which you did not toil, and cities you did not build, and you live in them and eat from vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And so God speaking to Joshua, they kind of set the scene. He, he gathers all the people together. And this is one of those moments in Israel's history that, that's one of those big moments. Like, I don't know if you've ever had these discussions in your family, but what I've found is, 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 is I've gotten older and, you know, I have, I, I have my own, like, I have my own, like, immediate family and my brother has his family. And, you know, there was a time where I remember as a kid, we would meet at my grandma's, my grandma and grandpa's house, and we would do the things there, and, and they kind of ruled the roost. And then, you know, as the kids get older, and so my mom and my aunt and my uncle, they kind of they branch out, and you kind of do your own thing. And what you don't realize as a kid is that there's a lot of family drama going on upstairs. That's why they send the kids downstairs at Thanksgiving. Hey, you guys are at the kids' table. You go down in the basement. One, they want you to destroy the house. There's some issues being addressed upstairs at the adult table. And what I've found is that sometimes now in my family is when you get there, and especially today, I'm not saying it's different from the past, but parents today tend to be a little more opinionated. Parents with kids tend to be a little more, you know what, mom, I know you raised me, but you, that's old school. This is what we do today. I've read 17 books and I've watched 70 videos on YouTube on this with my kids. Trust me, this is good. And, you're, and you know, parents are like, what? And I raised you, and you're fine. At least I think you're fine, right? And so you have these discussions. And so sometimes in families, you have what I like to call the, the line in the sand moment. You kind of draw the line in the sand and say, listen, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to be on that side, and this is how it's going to look in the future, or we're going to be on this side together, and this is how it's going to look in the future. And that's kind of what's happening here with Israel, is Joshua is getting ready to have that line in the sand moment with them and say, listen, it's really simple. You're either going to be on this side or you're going to be on that side. And so he sets this up and he takes them through all of history. And I think the reason he does is he gathers all the people, all the leaders, he gathers them all together and he says, guys, we are here today, not because of any of us, but because of God. And so he takes them back all the way back when they're beyond the Euphrates and when God calls Abraham at the time it was Abram and takes them through all that history of what happened when they left there and then what happened in Egypt and then what happened in the wilderness and, and then what happened when they went into the promised land. And so he, he brings it full circle and says, we're here today because of what God has done. And in essence, what Joshua is saying to the people is he's saying, guys, God is as relevant today in your life and my life as he's ever been. And he says, if you question God's relevance, you have to question everything because he said, you're here today, you're living in the land, you're eating food, you're living in cities that you had nothing to do with, but God did. And God brought you from where you are to this point. And I, I think about that and I think that's a great setup for them, but it's also a great setup for us. It's a great reminder for us because we're here today. And we're doing what we're doing today and, and we have things and, and we're at this place, all of us in life, and yes, we've done things to get here, but first and foremost, we're here because of God, right? And when you talk about in a spiritual sense, like you talk about a spiritual sense of, of forgiveness and of hope and, and a future and, and, and all those things that come in there, we have all those things. Like the stuff we sing about, the stuff we celebrate in here is not because of what we've done, it's because of what God has done. So spiritually God is relevant, but sometimes I think we forget just how relevant God is to everything we're doing. Like these people were there because of what God did. And this is important that it, I don't want you to miss this. See, sometimes we make this mistake that because we don't see in our eyes, because we don't see God doing something in our life, because we don't feel like God is active in our life, we automatically assume he's not active. But let me tell you this. You may not see what God is doing. You may not think that God is doing anything. You may not feel what God is doing, but I can tell you that God is active every single day in your life. And just because you don't see it, just because you don't feel it doesn't mean he's doing it. See, this is the funny thing about Christians. And so if you're in this room and you're not a Christian today, you're off the hook on this. But for those of us that say we're believers, we're Christians, we show up in church, this is the funny thing, is sometimes 
Maybe it's just me. Sometimes we get so consumed with ourselves, so consumed with our own lives, and in our little bubble, we put these blinders on, and we can't see anything. We're so consumed with what's going on in our lives that we don't see what God is doing in our life. Like, we don't see how he's working because we're so consumed with ourselves and thinking, man, I, I, I can't believe this is happening. I can't believe I'm doing this. I, where, where's God? And we miss what God is doing in the present day. See, sometimes, this is, the, this is the really funny one, is sometimes we get so consumed by negativity in the circumstances or the situations we find ourselves in that we don't see how God wants to work through us in that circumstance or situation to make something good come from it. I mean, that's the crazy thing, is God sometimes, I mean, if we believe that God is in control, if we believe that God's doing things, sometimes we're in situations, and if we can see the big picture, we're in this situation, and God is waiting for us to say, God, use me in this situation. But we're so mad, we're so upset, we're so frazzled, we're so consumed just with the situation, I can't believe this is happening again. God's like, you know what, when you're done complaining about what's going on, I, I want you to realize that you're there and I'm ready to work through you. Like I'm ready, we sang that song, I'm ready to move a mountain in this circumstance. But I can't, I, I, I can't work through you if you're not open and saying, God, use me, right? I mean, there's this verse that we misquoted a lot. It comes from Paul, it's in Romans chapter eight, verse 28, you may have heard it. It says, and we know that God causes all things to work together. And this is an important point for the good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. I've heard a lot of people quote this, people that don't, it's kind of judgmental on me, but some of them, you look at their track record, unless they, they have like, it's like a concealed love of God. They don't really seem to love God, and they quote, well, you know what, uh, the book, the Bible says that God, he, he causes all things to work together for the good of everyone, for the good of those who love him. And so what that verse tells me, what that tells us right here is that God directs the affairs of life in such a way for those that love him that the outcome is always beneficial. And you say, well, wait a minute, how can the outcome always be beneficial? Because I know Paul talks about for the good of those who love them, but not everything that I go through, not every situation is good. Yeah, some situations are bad. And what this verse tells us right here is regardless if a situation is good or if a situation is bad, God can work through all those situations for the benefit of those who love them. And you say, well, what's the benefit of, uh, of me going through a difficult situation? Well, the benefit is us becoming more like Christ. I mean, that's the, the point, that's the purpose of it. We talked a couple weeks ago when, when we talked about that sermon of, of suffering. And sometimes you don't even wanna talk about these things because as soon as we mention that, it, almost immediately, the day after that, even the day of, you start hearing things and you start hearing about how, uh, how, how brothers and sisters of ours here are going through things. They're suffering, they're enduring things, that stuff is popping up in their lives. And it's like sometimes you mention that and you hear the bad news, and I don't know about you, but I hate it when I hear that you guys, that, that some of you, that you're dealing with stuff. I hate it when I hear that your, your family, you're going through something, that something has happened and you're going through a battle with your kids or you're going through a battle with your spouse. You're going through a battle of health. You're going through a relationship battle. I hate that stuff because to me it happens way too frequently and, way, and it happens way too often. But we look at that and the answer and the question we ask is why, but as we talked about is in those situations, in those moments, for whatever the reason, God often grows us in those. Paul's he's saying that right here. He's like, in the good times and the bad times, God is active. And we become more like Christ, and our faith grows, and it strengthens, and it deepens. And, and, and in those situations, it's often the way that many of you have handled yourself when life doesn't give you a lot of options. And the only options they give that are extremely bad, how you handle yourself in those situations. It's been crazy to see not only how you've changed, but the impact it makes on other people's lives. I, 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 sometimes I wish things were completely different, but often our response when life is bad is more impactful on people than our response when life is good. And you may not like to hear this, you may not agree with this, but I think that what that verse tells us is when life is good, when life is bad, and we're going through this and God is working, to me that is relevancy, right? That is God being active and involved in our lives. I mean, that's what relevancy is, that God is making an impact, that, that, that God is working, that God is doing things 
when it's good, when it's bad in our lives, and just because we don't see it, just because we don't recognize it, doesn't mean that God isn't doing things. See, sometimes I think when it comes to, is God relevant? We equate God being relevant in our lives and our world to God conforming to what culture says God should be or to what we think or feel God should be. You can blame Dale Reeves for this. I'm just joking. I love Dale and he, Dale's got a lot of wisdom if you don't know that. And uh, he gave me this great quote this week and I said, can I steal this and use this? So I'm gonna give him credit for it. I didn't find it, Dale found it and he's being nice. Probably means I owe him a sleeve of golf balls or something at some point. Maybe take him to Skyline, which we're not gonna complain about that. He gave me this great quote and he said this, he said, God is not going to rewrite the Bible for your generation Stop trying to change scripture when it's written to change you. I love that. God is not going to rewrite the Bible for your generation. So stop trying to change scripture when it's written to change you. And isn't that the truth of how things are today? I mean, we, we want to we, we rewrite the Bible. And sometimes you think the audacity that we have, that the Bible has, has been around forever. It's God's inspired word. And we think that God should rewrite it to fit what we feel or what we think is right or how we think it should fit us, or how it should adapt to culture. And, and I'm telling you, man, God didn't inspire this word so that we could come along in 2019, 2020, 2030 and say, you know what, God, let me correct this a little bit and let me tell you how this should read or what this should say. God, God didn't do that so we could change his word. God gave us his word so it would change us, so it would impact our lives, so we would be different. So we would be effective in the world we live in. See, that's the crazy thing is we think that if we make God's Bible more relevant to our times, that we'll have a greater impact in people's lives. And that's the fallacy. The truth is, if we allow God's word to be more relevant in our lives, it will make us more relevant in culture and it'll allow us to see a greater change which takes place in our culture. Because listen, culture doesn't need Christians who want to water it down. Culture doesn't need Christians who want to change the truths that God has in this word. Culture needs Men and women that are going to stand up and say, this is what God says, this is how God loves us, and this is how I'm going to love you. And if we can't accept that, see, we got some issues. See, the question today isn't so much, is God still relevant in our world today? That's a no-brainer, yes. The question isn't with God, it's with you and with me. Are we still relevant with what God's doing? That's the question today. Are we relevant and are we gonna be relevant to God's plan? Are we gonna be relevant to what he's doing? I figure you guys aren't gonna see me for a week so I can just say what I'm thinking. We got an election coming up and I'm gonna say this with, all, with as much love as I can. I don't care if you're a Trump supporter I don't care if you support one of the 20 Democrats. I don't care if you don't know who to support. I'm gonna tell you something. Whoever sits in that White House in 2020, one thing they're not gonna change is God's plan for mankind, right? We get into some stuff, like I get it today. I, I, one of the things we get, we get nervous of is in culture, we don't know what to do with, we don't know what to do, especially in the church, we've seen the stuff of, of we don't know what to do with gay marriage. We don't know what to do with that. And I'm gonna tell you, if it's legalized and they force churches to say, hey, you have to do this, otherwise you're gonna lose your tax exempt status, or we have to do this or we're gonna throw you in prison. And churches everywhere say, okay, we're just going to go along with this. I don't care if that's pushed down the church's throat, it's not gonna stop what God is doing in our country. Like, like right now, one of the scary things are is we're in uncharted territories. Dale, Dale wrote a, a great blog that I encourage you to read on and homosexuality and, and how we deal with this as the church. And I'll be honest with you, I, was, I wish that I had more answers and we're all kind of wading into this stuff delicately. And we're, we're trying to balance the truth of God with the grace of God. And I think it, it should be, we should be full of grace and we should be full of truth. And as we work through this and it's coming into our country and it, it's, it, it's, it's running rampant, whether we want to realize or not, it's running rampant in, in our high schools, in our middle schools, 
throughout, throughout our kids. And, and we're coming to this point and we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do with this, the, with the, with the sexual identification. There's so many of these things here that we're trying to figure out. We're trying to figure out what to do in the church. We're trying to figure out in, in culture. And let me tell you, regardless of what's decided, regardless of what happens in these things, n- no matter what we think, what we think uh, about sexual identification, what we think about homosexuality, what we think about heterosexuality, regardless of what we think of those things, that's not going to change God's plan of what he's doing, right? Our mission statement here, we talk about redeeming us back to God. Like we're here with a reason and that is to redeem, help redeem people back to God. And we're not doing the redemption. God's doing the redemption, but we're his hands and feet. And so for us, one of the things we have to realize is when it talks about being relevant in culture today is I don't care what culture says is going on. Nothing that culture says, nothing that culture can do will change the fact that God wants to work through every single person in this room to help someone that's far away from him or that that doesn't know him to have a relationship with God. That's where we're relevant. That's where we need to be. And that's what we have to focus on, right? Because we get into this. And, and, and we see Joshua, and he puts Israel on the spot. You know, we go to verses 14 and 15. See, it's 10 o'clock. We'll get, we'll get going. It says, now fear the Lord. I'll stop going off. To, I'll, I'll just stick to my script here. I just, you know, sometimes, and one thing I've learned from Trevor is we just sometimes, you got to leave yourself a little open area. It's like if you're playing golf, you want the wide fairways, not the narrow ones. So if you're writing something, you leave yourself a little open area because... You never know what you're going to say. Let's get back to the text here. Some of you are like, man, it's, I'm hungry. Let's go. <laughs> Verse 14. Okay, let's get back. Joshua 24, 14. Back on test. It says, now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. And what? Serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites. In whose land you are living, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And I love this. I mean, Josh was clear. He's like, this is that line in the sand moment. He's like, today, he's like, I I brought you guys here. I remind you of this. And he said, today, you're making a choice. He said, you're making a choice today. He said, you're either going to serve the the gods of your forefathers, the gods of your parents, the gods of your grandparents. You're going to serve the gods that that were in Egypt. You're going to serve the gods that way were beyond when we were still living. Our people were still beyond the Euphrates. You can serve the gods of the Canaanites, the Amorites, in whose land you're living right now. He said, or today you can choose to serve God. He's like, but for me and my house, we're serving the Lord. I don't know where you're going to fall on this, but he said, you're choosing today. It's either you're serving the Lord or serving these other gods. And what I love about Joshua is this, is, is Joshua, he Right here, he's not concerned with what these people think. He doesn't care what they think. He cares about what his God, what the Almighty, what Jehovah thinks. And so he just tells them, he's like, if serving God seems undesirable to you, like you don't want to do it, you figure out who you want to serve. But me and my house, we're on this line of the sand. We're serving the Lord. And my fear today is that many Christians, many believers that we're more concerned with being relevant in the world we live in. We're more concerned with being relevant in culture. We're more concerned with people liking what we put on social media. That we're more concerned with the group of people that we do life with, that we hang out with, that, that we, we play sports with, that we go to school with, that we work with. We're more concerned with them liking us than we are of God and what God thinks and, and, and what God's concerned about. So the question then for us today is, okay, so, so how do we remain relevant? Because this is the rub, is that in our quest to remain relevant to what God is doing while still living in our world, it, is, it, it seems like one of two things happens. Either we get on this far side where we're like, you know what, I just want to be relevant in the world, and so we just leave God, and we leave that stuff away. So we just like, okay, I just want to do what culture tells me to do. I want to be accepted by culture. And so we, we don't even really worry what God thinks. Or we go on the other side, and we're like, you know what, I'm really concerned with what God thinks. I'll be relevant to God. So we move all the way over to that side with God, but we're like, the best thing for me to do is to pull myself out of culture because I just want to be focused by God. I don't want to be tainted by culture. But we're called to live in culture. Like this is one of the, the great things that Peter says. He says, live such good lives. He didn't say among the Christians in churches. He says, live good such lives among the pagans that even though they want to accuse you of doing wrong, 
they're going to glorify God because of how you live. And so we're supposed to be there in the middle. So how do we do this? The first thing is, I think it's simple, is, is fear the Lord. I love, um, Joshua says this, he says, fear the Lord. And Proverbs 1, 7, many people believe Solomon wrote this, says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. And quite simply there, when we see the term fear the Lord, it's not a fear that like where you're afraid. Like if you, maybe some of you like scary movies. I don't like scary movies. If I watch those things, they freak me out. And I'm, I'm, I'm almost 40, but I still think they're coming in my house. So I can't watch that stuff. But if I watch them, I turn the volume all the way down. I mute it. Because if there's no, the music's kind of, the music creates this suspense. So if I turn the volume all the way down, I just watch them like, ha. It's, it's kind of a comedy to me. Not that bad things are happening, but I don't get scared, right? So when we read this here, fear the Lord, it's not saying, okay, be scared like scary movies of God. But it's like talking about a reverence of God. That the, the fear of the Lord, it's almost this, uh, uh, you should have a fear of, you don't want to offend God. That that's what we should operate with, of, of not wanting to offend God first and foremost. That, that's the fear of the Lord. He, he files that up and he says this, he says that you have to not only fear the Lord, but serve him. Joshua 24, 14, the beginning part says, therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and truth. I switched the translation on you. I went from the NIV to the NASB right here because when he says serve him, he says in sincerity and truth. And so the question is, is okay, what does it look like to serve him, to serve God in sincerity and truth? And the Hebrew word for sincerity is tall meme. And what this implies is uh, wholeness, blamelessness, uh, uh, impeccable uh, kind of perfection. And the idea behind this is that when we serve God in sincerity and truth, that we're completely devoted to God, that we're locked into God. And the reason he says that is when we continue on, the second half of verse 14, he tells the people, Joshua does, he says, throw away the gods your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And then he says, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, he goes in that, choose who you're going to serve today. And the reason he says, throw away the gods your ancestors worship is that the people weren't, like, like you remember what happened to the people, why they didn't spend time in the wilderness? Like they got out and they escaped the Egyptians and they built, what was that gold thing they built? McDonald's? A calf. Okay, they build a golden calf. So they're worshiping it. Remember Moses comes down off the mountain, he's just fire. He's just mad. They wanted it for 40 years. Like they didn't get in. They, were, they, they had some significant idol worship. And so we read this throw away the gods. And Joshua's not implying that these people here in the promised land were, were worshiping idols like previous generations. But what was happening is they were taking some of their idol worship and some of their worship of God and they were mixing it together. And so it wasn't, it, it wasn't pure. It wasn't what God wanted. And the problem with that is when they would bring in these other gods and some of these idols and they'd incorporate that to the worship of God, that over a period of time, they would kind of drift away. And, and, and instead of worshiping God, being completely do devoted to God, the heart over time would become corrupted. Uh, sin would creep more and more into their lives and it would just lead to a lot of, of issues. And so Josh is like, remove these things and be completely devoted to God. And just as it was true for them back then, it's true for us today. See, sometimes what we struggle with is in, in our worship of God is, is we wrestle with, and I get it, it's a struggle for all of us, is we want to be committed to God, but we're also wrestling with stuff in the world. And, and so what we have to do there is, is we have to remove those things when we serve God, remove those things that keep us from focusing and keep us from worshiping God. And so as we just wrap things up today, um, I just want to encourage you with this. Just as Joshua, he laid out the challenge to his people and he said, hey guys, today you need to make a decision. You were either going to serve God and, it, and if, if it seems undesirable, choose today who you're going to serve. But he says, for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. And so as we wrap up this You Ask, We Answer series, I think it's kind of fitting in some ways that as we're here today, it, what God is asking us, what God is challenging us with is, is it's, it's not just today, but it's every day. God's like, are you going to choose me? or you can choose uh, something else. So what I wanna do for you guys right now is I, I wanna pray for you. Um, these guys, Chris is gonna come out and lead us out of here. But um, just as you leave here, today, leave here today, I want to challenge you with that is, is who you're gonna choose. Is it, is, it, is it God or is it ourselves? Is it, is it the world? Let's pray. Father, uh, we thank you for your son. We thank you for just how much uh, you love us. Father, thank you for letting us be in your house today. And uh, Father, we just thank you for being able to be in here to um, worship, you know, worship you through, through music, through hearing the word. And Father, we thank you for the kids and just being able to celebrate with them and, and what they've done this past week. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, this is a time of response. And I want to invite you um, 
and those on the house campus just gather together around pray for each other with each other if you're on a sister life page uh right below the chat room there is a um uh link prayer request or if you're on a sister life page send us a message uh so we can we want to pray for you we want to pray with you brad going to come back here in the room uh in a minute uh so we can uh connect and talk about uh more about the message uh, but it's so uh, incredible and powerful uh, what God's doing. Uh, and through this, God is relevant today. And he, um, he is so important to what, what is going on here and what's going on in your life. So we, we want to be relevant, right? We want to be relevant. We want to be important. We want to impact your life. We want to impact what's going on uh, there with you. So we have an opportunity right now to pray. And we are here to pray with you. We got our volunteers ready. Uh, that will pray with you, that will connect with you. Uh, so either on Facebook Live or Sis Live page, where you are, we are um, available and willing uh, to connect with you, to talk with you uh, today. Uh, so important. We're going to jump right into the next service. Our next service starts in nine minutes. So we'll be back here at 920 uh, to welcome you, to talk with you. Uh, stick around, share. Uh, uh, be part of what God's doing through CC Live. We'll see you in a few minutes. What would your life be like if you could experience love in a more meaningful way? How would you be changed? We believe that together through God's love, we can find real life through real stories and real answers to life's questions.